Welcome back, everybody, to episode two of the high stakes cash game Mochi versus Abe the Snake. Now, in the first episode, they played 10 games, and Mochi is off to a 12 point lead. Will this continue? Only time will tell. Now, if you missed episode one, you can find that on my backgammon channel. It is called uh, Justin Plays BG, or you can search Justin Knoll Backgammon on YouTube. Find it that way. Or you can look down in the description. I'm sure I will put it there too, <laughs> all right? You should definitely go check that video out if you missed it. Like the video over there. Subscribe to the channel over there for me to release more backgammon content. That is also where you will find episode three. And then episode four will then be posted here on Mochi's channel. So let's just go over the rules one more time before we start this. Ah, game rules. So the game rules are as stated. We have a normal cash game situation, except for the clock. We will be using a 12 second delay time only with no reserve time. If they dip into any reserve time, those extra seconds are going to cost them. And that cost is going to be one and a half percent of a point. So if they're playing for a hundred dollars, they would be paying one and a half dollars per second. If they're playing for a thousand dollars, they would be paying $15 per second. And that can clearly add up, right, for every second used. Dice on checkers is a legal roll. So if the dice land flat on the checkers or one is on a checker and one is on the board, that is considered a legal roll. That's just to speed up the game so they don't have to reset the clock too much because the delay time can be reset if the dice are rolled off of the playing surface. You'll notice the players doing that for each other. Gentlemen, gentlemen rules there. We're also playing with the Jacoby rule which means that no side can win a gammon unless the cube has already been turned. And we are also playing with beavers, meaning that if somebody gives you a cube and you don't think it's a good cube or just honestly for any reason whatsoever, you can take that two cube and turn it to four and hold on to it. So let's get to the game. So here we are and we are ready to begin now. <laughs> All right. We've got a 6 2. 3 1 makes the 5. The next 3 1 makes the 5. 2 1 should hit. Oh, he reached for the split but lifted the checker. Interesting. I guess that stops rolls like what he rolled, 1-6 from, uh, from hitting. Double twos, makes the four and the defensive anchor. Great shot, double sixes. Oh, man. Great shot from Abe. The 5-1 seems clear. Double threes, pops off that anchor and comes down. Five three, no, what is it? Six five, okay, just two down. Hmm, the five two. Ooh, was that the play? Just clear instead of volunteer. Double threes again should just make the inside points. 6-1 should just run to the ace. Uh, Abe just missed a small double. Apparently. I don't think I would have found that one either. 2-1, nice small roll. Obviously, the larger, bigger doubles would be better. But... Double threes. The board crunches. And he gives the cube now. Up 10 pips in the race. And with Mochi's broken board, the cube looks good. You know, in these holding games, you win by getting a shot and then hitting a shot and then containing that checker. 
And once the board has broken like that, given up the six point, it makes it very difficult to do that last part, which is the part that helps you win, which is containing that checker. The three six hits, and he's crossing his fingers, hoping he can roll the two. Does he roll it? No, oh, one four, fan. Five three, covers and just comes down. Three one, enters and moves a little bit more forward. Double fours. Okay, what's he thinking about? Okay, just two over and take a guy off. I. No? Three off? Ah, we could have just cleared the point. Okay. Tough. That was a blunder for Abe there. Will that cost him the gamut in this game? 5-3. Okay, we got to clear the five point. 5-4 five, runs off. Double sixes. Okay, great roll for the gamut, but there's a shot. 1-4. He hits, of course. Of course. Can't win world championships without hitting those. 6-3. Oh, my goodness. Double hit. You can't be a professional uh, backgammon player without those re-hits from the roof either. 5 2 we fans with one of them. 4-3. Okay. That's Forrest. Comes around. Just needs to roll the ace. 4-2. Misses another two. Almost everything else felt like it hit. 5-1. And now he's racing off the, the gammon. Trying to at least. Should take Abe four rolls to get off. There's the first one. So the six. And then I guess the four comes out. Or two. Yeah, he's going to need big doubles. Yeah, 3-1 won't do it. That's Jin Gammon for Abe. All right, he's getting some of those points back. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! <laughs> you know, uh, after the first session, it's, uh, it's interesting to see Abe win a game, you know? Session one, it felt like every single game that was played, Abe was trying to run off of a uh, run off of a gammon, which is not fun. Definitely not fun from his perspective. More fun for Mochi's, uh, definitely. Four one is a legal roll. He gets to enter and make the five. Six one should make the five point. Right, the five point is good. I hear. Double threes, what a great shot that is. Oh, he gets to anchor and hit on the outside. I think I missed that one. Five, two, okay. Should come out, probably. Little distraction play there, but he now gets to double hit him. And if he doesn't roll a three, it's not looking good. Six, five, wrong side of the board. Clock reset. 5-2, okay. Probably not yet. 3-2 makes the point, okay. 4-3's a hitter. 4-5 makes the point and enters. That's strong. Only playing with one blot now, but double threes hits it. And he gets to anchor and make the outside point. Doubles from the roof, always the holy grail. And the five should come out. This way or the other way? The other way gets hit less. Although double fives doesn't hit anybody, but you're not going to re-roll. Wow, look at that. It just clears everything. And now Mochi's up 33 pips. The guy's back. You don't want this. It just hits you, and you could just fan as you bring everything around. Hits and goes to the three, right? Yeah, okay. This seems reasonable. You don't want to leave him any shots. And and you just sit back here. You just sit back here, and you just build your board, and build your board, and you just wait for a shot now, right? Just goes to the six point. 
five three is a good number. What number is this? Double fives? Hey. And then the five comes down. Four one just makes the point. Now white is feeling a little bit awkward about being back on that uh, 24 point. I don't think it's the right moment to step up with the three. There's not enough spares there yet to really threaten him. You see, now he gets a shot because of this by staying back. That was great, but he missed it. Five, four, okay, we come in. Six, five, okay. He's just slotting the next point in line. I want you to see he's just trying to make the bar and then put a checker on the two. And he's just sitting there building his board, building his board, waiting. And slot the one. Just waiting for that shot, right? So right now, what, six, one leaves a shot. Six, four leaves a shot. What's the number? Six, four, it's one of the numbers. Does he roll the four? Oh, he rolls the four, and he comes out with both, and now he holds his breath. Does the ace happen? No, there's no ace, and the game is over. Four cube. Wow, okay. Couldn't bring that one home. Got a shot, hit the shot, very important. <laughs> Oh, man. The score now is only plus six for Mochi. Looks like Abe is on the comeback trail. He's running. Run, Forrest, run! Okay. Split and came down. Stopped himself from making a funny play there. What's the roll? 4-4? Four, four? He doesn't hit him? He could have pointed on him with the 4-4, four, four, which stops the anchor on the highest point. What's the roll here? Okay, double twos. That'll do it. And come down. Yep. 3-1. Has to enter and start making that prime. So there's one back versus two back. Strong prime. Probably close. Any six outs, probably a market loss. This hit is definitely a market loss unless he hits back, which he does. And now with three back versus one back, Mochi's thinking about the cube from the roof behind a four prime, and it is a cube. Look at that. Wow. Now that was strong. Very strong. Wow, what do we do here? Just make the 18? Okay, you went for the attack. Does it work? 3-6, he's out, and now there's nobody in the outfield if he doesn't roll the deuce. There's no one in the outfield if he doesn't roll the deuce, and he stays back on the 24. Yikes. Just bring the four in, no shots. We don't want to get hit. Shots? You want me to leave shots? No. No. In Michi's new book, he would call this the completed stage, right? Where you're just trying to bring everybody home, so you don't want to leave numbers to get hit, because then well, you'll have to escape that prime again. But making the bar was worth the numbers to hit, because it just makes bringing everything else home quite easy. What's the number here? Four, one. I guess he has to give something here. We're not gonna get rid of the prime. Six, two, no, that misses, but he has to jump out. I think he knows he, wow. Man, that third guy back was certainly a liability. Just point on him. And now he's closed out again. Oh my goodness, double sixes. Yeah. My goodness. Oh. 
I'm stressed for Abe being closed out every game. This is killing me. I don't have any action on this whatsoever, and I'm still like, my goodness. Like, how many games can you get shut out with one or two checkers on the roof? If you haven't seen episode one, you, you, you won't know what I mean. But he rolled doubles, a shot. Oh my goodness, he hits. But there's two blots, 20 numbers hit. 6-3 is not one of them. He's got three checkers off. 6-2 covers. So he's got three guys off. Does he roll the ace? There's no ace. Double. Instant. Instant. Oh my goodness, that was sick. What a turnaround. Oh. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! Wow, that one was for Abe. Uh, that was uh that was a turnaround. Goes goes from losing a for sure G to rolling big doubles, leaving a shot, getting hit, missing the 20 return numbers, and then getting the insta cube back. One six. I guess we just come out to the Oh, what? 13 7 is the best play. In the face of all those shots, just giving, uh, wow. That was, uh, that was a tough one there. I have a folder of positions on my computer called, uh, which six. Where it's just talking about which six to play from the roof. And those spots are very, 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 very tricky sometimes. Double ones, insta board. 4-6, can't complain. I would go to the deuce as well, even though I can see the computer says it's wrong by a little bit. I like having a spare on the 8 point. 6-3, runs right off the anchor, knowing that he can't easily attack him. So now he's looking for larger numbers to get off again. So he just comes out. You got to come out and just make the back of the prime, right? He can only hit you with twos that cover because of what your board looks like. And the twos are duplicated to hit and cover, so he's not gonna hit you. And now Mochi just has a small lead in the race. Nothing substantial, 5-4. Double threes, okay, breaking contact. I guess he's up 12 pips now. Two in. The difference is seven. So the speed is too fast to do a hard count without paying a lot in equity. So I think Mochi is keeping a running count in a lot of these positions. Double sixes, okay, no need to count that one. Double sixes is always good. Five, four, and just eyeballing it. Do, 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 do. I think it's a cube. And it's a monster pass. Wow. Strong rolling, strong rolling. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! <laughs> All right, the 6 3 splits and comes down. 2 3. Okay, this is clear. If you've studied your openings, that is. And make the point. 4-1 just slots. You're already down in the race, so you're not concerned about getting hit again, though you would have preferred to have been missed, obviously. 4-6 just comes down with the 6. Trying to create some structure. You make this and come down. 2-1 just makes the 5 point. Right, and now Mochi's just sitting here trying to build his board, waiting to hit a shot, right? Now he wants to slot the seven and make the four. He gets to make the four. Six, four, makes the bar, leaves the ace shot. There's no ace there, four, two. Two, four. 
one three would prefer to make the five, but you might as well just get off this. Maybe you make the five next time. No, he comes around. What's happening here? Okay, what's the race? It's up 28 pips. Cube is in the center still. Just broke contact and he gets missed here. I think you should cube. Definitely now, right? You have a lot of numbers to make the five, but he doesn't have it yet. And with that gap, you can still probably take Especially with the gap and the defender on the 24. I mean, you don't love it. Oh, he passes this one. Okay, okay. Don't blame you. It always feels like uh, those games are just too difficult to win, you know? Feels like they're a bit too difficult to win. So he passes. Next game. The lead is now down to four. Four, three splits. What is he doing with this number? I thought he was doing the old school split where they split with the four. But no, he plays two down and then Mochi rolls another three, one. I think he, every other game he, he opens with three, one apparently. That's uh, not bad. I'd love to be able to have that. Five, one makes the five. This five, one hits. Two, three anchors. 6-5, okay, and then just replenish the 8-point. Nice to have a spare there. That guy's always useful. Good, give yourself a runner. Hmm. What's the number? 4-1. Interesting. Okay, and step up. Good. Needs to give himself a 6 out, but the 4-5 hits. 3 and then 4 hits again. Abe really needs a 6 from the rook, but not two of them. And now 5-1 makes the 4 behind the 8 ball again. He really needs to enter. Okay, and come out. Oh, he, Mochi needs 6s to, to run. He doesn't roll it. Oh, that's Abe, yeah. 5-2, okay, just comes around. So every five games, they switch the direction of the board just so no one person is stuck rolling on the heavy side of the board during the bear-off, trying to even out any... Wow, 22 to 16. Note to self, ask Mochi about this play during the post-match analysis. Like, uh, I guess the answer to that question is just the race. My question is, how do you find that? How do you find that? 2-4. Is there a 6? Nope, 4-3. Oh, look, the switching play, breaking the 6, leaving just one blot in their inner board. Doubles from the roof. So he's got three guys back behind that prime. Which is going to be hard to get out. And white is on the roof, shooting at 20 numbers to pick up at least one guy. The volatility sky high. But he could fan. Which he does. And the six comes out, but then there's no three to cover. But you gotta come out. You can't stay there. You can't stay there. Staying there is death. Three, six... Where's your six? You come out, yeah? No, the bot says hit two. Well, that's one way to freeze those extra blots in the outfield. Three, one, and he hits him again. And Abe fans. Okay. Well, the one makes the point, and I guess if that's your one, this has to be your four. 5-1 fans. 1-4, you need to split off that guy. So yes, exactly. So now you have fives and sixes to leave instead of just sixes. 6-3. Six, oh, wow. Perfect. Oh, and a 6-5 fan. And now 
now the double twos is blitzing. 3-1 hits back. Yeah, okay. Another 3-6. Wow. Perfect. Okay, I guess you just make the anchor. No, no, the higher bit. You, you gotta get out. Ay. I mean, it seems okay. The problem is it's easier for him to make a six prime now because all he wants to do is start slashing away on the, uh, the three point bearing in, right? And since your board looks like it does, he can do it easily because it's just gonna break because everyone's behind the prime. 2-6, okay. 6-3 just runs all the way out. 1-3, he's got a hit. Now he makes the next point in line, comes in. Now he really needs a 6. Roll extra hard and you get double sixes. Okay. Ah, okay. He wants to leave one there so he can have a four to try to get extra time. He really needs to hit that guy. One six. Oh my goodness. Man, if he turns this game around. <laughs> the funny thing is they're playing on my board with my cup. My dice, I know it's all legit. Four cube was handed, seems a bit early. Seems a bit early. Maybe it's a good cube after you hit. Three, four, oh. Perfect. Oh. I what? can't believe what we're seeing. What just happened? Oh. Last thing, uh, last thing you want is for is for Abe to start thinking he's gonna roll well. When he does, man, it is it is some of the strongest rolling in uh, in the atmosphere. Yeah, he doesn't want him to anchor. He wants to pick up the second guy, but he doesn't want to break the five prime and have some slippery game. Shuffling back and forth, using the time. Finds the best play with the double hit. Go ahead, hit me, he says. I don't care. Because now I'm... You know, he gets the third guy. And now the gammons are sky high if he can get them closed out. He fans. Oh, man. 6-5 just blitzes, of course, right? Because now his board is broken. He's not worried about getting hit. 1-2 makes the point. Now all he has to do is close the three. 4-3, okay. He's just diversifying his numbers to give himself a better chance of making the three points. 6-5, double fours. Three, and then... The slot. I don't care about nothing, he says. Wow, what a good play. That was the best play. Slotting the point, just getting ready to make it. Don't want the gap there. The guy's board looks like nothing. If he hits you, you've got so many guys to hit back. Four one. Double four. Shot time. Drum roll. Six four. Field goal. Oh, another double six. Okay. He needs a three or else he gets gammon for sure. Four two misses. And this is a gammon for the snake man. Double threes. Don't think there's any getting off of this. Going to need uh, boxes right now, and that is the wrong side of the dice. The sixes are on the other side. They're on the other side. Oh, man. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! What's the score now? Did Abe just take a lead? Was that a gammon on a... Was that a... Wow. Is that the score? Oh, no, no. Okay, I'm adjusting the score. 
because the scoreboard only goes up to 25. I was like, what's happening here? What's happening here? <laughs> okay, okay, just a score adjustment. But Abe is still up four points now. He was just down 12 at the start of this. And not many games have gone, wow, okay. Guy's got a little confidence now. Okay, just comes out and around. Maybe the point was also strong. 3 4 hits. Got lasers on the lasers on the dice there. Okay. Makes the 20. What number is this? 5 3. Okay, we can just pick everybody up. Now he has reached the completed stage of the game where it does not matter what you do. When the cube is a coming, you should be passing. Passing the cube. <laughs> Wait, what? Was that a 30 percenter? What's the race here? Oh, he's down 45 pips. So these holding games uh, are often perceived as takes more than they, they might actually be. So all of Mochi's timing is on the outside, which makes his position super flexible. And he also has uh, the bar point made. And having the bar point made as a landing spot in these holding games is extra strong, right? Uh, a lot of times with good distribution and flexibility on the outside with the time to, to roll the doubles to clear the mid and you have the bar point made, you can't, you can't take super deep on those, right? And he was down like 40-something pips when he took. And I think the most you can be down is like 20, 21. I often think about those positions about being within double fives if he has um, the seven point made with good distribution, five, two, just clearing that. So his big doubles don't leave a shot like sixes and fives. He rolls five, four, clears it pretty easy. Guess you can stick around for a roll. Yeah, you might as well stick around for 6-1, 5-1. 4 though, no problem. No gamut in this game, but an easy win from here. It's going to take a miracle for Abe to catch up in this one. 6-5. Okay. 5-2, 5-2. 4-3. Five four. Three two. Okay, but he's still even. Five not like he's worried. Five two misses completely. Okay, that seems to be the nail in the coffin there. Easy win. So we can see that throughout all of these games, I don't know what's been I don't know if he's not been hitting his clock or what happened, but it, it I don't feel like Abe's used that much time, but it looks like the clock has been running because the only difference between them is 15 seconds now, which means Abe used a minute, but I haven't seen him slow down one bit, so I don't know where he's using this time. Double fives has to make the three. But it's on you to hit the clock, you know? If you haven't hit the clock, that's on you. Uh, Though, if you notice it as the player, it, it, gentleman rules, you should definitely tell the guy that he hasn't hit the clock. Um, but I don't think anyone noticed. I certainly didn't notice, and I was there. Two, one. That seems risky. A lot of shots out there. That's not one of them, though. Not one of the hitters. 2-1, blocks his sixes out. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that would have been my natural play, but the computer says that it's tied with just running around. 5-2 should come out now. Try to fade the ace, okay, double fives. Uh, you don't like this structure, <laughs> clearly. Although, as some might say, it's good for the race. It's good for the race. So Mochi's down 20 pips, but was able to cube this position 
due to the distribution of White's board, right? Broken board positions, you gotta look out for them, right? These numbers are deceptive because now look at that six, right? The guy has to instantly run off his anchor and hope to fade the attack. Seven, one, 18, 17. Just hope he doesn't roll a six here. He does roll a six, but a five and a one is not a six. Not in the way he needed. 6-2. Wow, that misses. I don't think he should come forward, because if he rolls a 6, he's just down in the race. What is the... Really? I like Mochi's play better than what the computer says. Why wouldn't you just slot the next point? Maybe they... Oh, double fours? Oh, my goodness. Well, no, I agree with the computer now. Uh... <laughs> Double fours is too strong. Wow. Wow. No! Uh, seven. Woo. And a four three. Mochi's already given the cube away. Okay, so now he just needs something good. Double ones hits and makes the two. Two six fans. 5-2 does nothing. So you could play completely safe, but I don't think you should because you want to make the four. Double sixes leaves a shot. Everything leaves a shot in this session. What is going on? Not everything hits a shot, though. That's important. 4-2. 6-2. Double fives. It's like double ones would have taken off more checkers, but. Wow, there's no way. There's no way. 4-1 misses. Trying to help him out, apparently. Another four, okay. Mochi does not want to see a two. Double fours, though, he does want to see. And this game is over. 2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one. He's got too many on the other side. All right. You have a square game again all of a sudden. Just a few games ago, it looked like uh, Mochi was going to run up a score being plus 100, but now it's back to square. So the PRs right now are 3.5 for Mochi playing at this speed, which is incredible. And Abe's is at a round of, what does it say, a 4.8 down there? Pretty strong. So one of the interesting things about playing a two down sort of opening, right? Where you play like four, three, two down. Some people play two, three, two down. Some people play like five, two, two down, right? When somebody plays two checkers down, what they're doing is they're dedicating their entire opening roll to offensive possibilities, which means on your next roll, if you were to roll an ace like a one, two or a one, four or a one, five, you should use that ace to slot. That way, if they roll a four and hit you, they aren't building, right? By bringing two down, they've dedicated their entire opening roll to building. And if they have to divert from that plan to hit you with the four, you've kind of taken away the momentum of their opening rolls uh, pointing, right? Just making points in the home board. And that often gives a lot of return shots from the roof on the outside as well. Uh, just keep that in mind. Four, three, two down, four, three, two down, four, five. Hits, yeah. You got to look at making the five, but the hit is strong if he misses the, the, the blots, yeah? So you're doing good. Six, five points, very strong. Double fives. Should make the, can you hit on the one? What is this? What's happening here? Two, four. Hmm. Five, one makes the five point. No? What is this number? 
Oh, 5 1 makes the 9. Yes, yes, yes. Fewer shots, cleans everybody up. 6 2's running. 6 2 is missing, but slots the 5. Does he roll it? He does roll a 5 6. Is he coming out with both or coming around the corner? I like coming out with both, just trying to get out of dodge. Unless he rolls double fives, then I prefer to do anything else. See how he hits the checkers down? He's letting you know he rolled a good number, folks. <laughs> Five, three. And now Abe is up uh, 18 pips and another pointless double and a pointless double pass. Very, very rare to see pointless double passes, but Mochi sees it and passes. Too many numbers make the five point. You're down 18 pips. You're losing in all aspects of the game. That was a really strong pass. All right. And we have ourselves a break. Wow. All right. Well, stay tuned for the Super Grand Master Analysis. Whew. That was tough. Ugh. All right. We are here with the Super Grand Master Analysis session. We have the world's only Super Grand Master, Masayuki Mochizuki, otherwise known Hello. as Hi. Mochi. How are you doing today? Hi, very good. I'm in uh, actually I'm in quarantine hotel in Tokyo. So so you're you're back in Japan now. So. And I just heard yeah, the I'm announcement that your food was ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to see my food? One moment. <laughs> yeah. What did they give you today? So you can't um, leave this hotel for how many days? Well, I can't leave my room, not in even the hotel. I can't get out of the room at all oh. for next three days. And uh, three times a day, I will get this, this food, the bento box and uh, green tea that uh, only entertainment I have. Well, I mean, of course, I have internet and the TV sets. But this small room is my office for the next three days. Office. That's a much better word than prison. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, we're going to go over the next 10 games that were played during this last session. So at the beginning of the of this session, you were up 12 points, but then Abe made quite a comeback, and now the score is even after 20 games. Now, I know it's been a while since these games were played, but do you have any recollection of like the feeling you had after being up 12 and then in the next 10 games it being even again? I think at one point he even took a lead. Um, well, if you play you know, back him on wrong enough, then you would expect um, back of your head that, yeah, I'm leading 12 points right now, but this could, you know, lose to zero or, you know, go back to zero or, you know, even go, could, could go to negative, you know, try to get any, not to get any expectation so that to, to avoid um, any disappointment hence i would you know get emotionally you know, discouraged or anything yeah. so uh i i felt nothing as usual okay so it's not like about 12 of course points. i wasn't happy but... we're going to 100 you know it's like uh it's just part of the ebbs and flows of the game when the luck goes one way as, as it mm -hmm. did during the first 10 games the luck could go exactly the opposite way for the next 10 games and yeah but i I do remember that one game I really regret, and I uh, remember that game, you know, next games and, and a couple of games. Um, but we will see. Okay, cool. So you have selected 10 positions that you wanted to go over from... Yeah, I, I guess uh, 10 or a little bit more. I don't okay. remember, but I... Uh, yeah. yeah, the more the better. So I have the XG open here. And I'm going to go to the mm -hmm. first flagged position, which is move 18 mm -hmm. on this game here. Okay. Yeah, this is not, not a I mean, trivial move. This is just interesting that I have to play. 
bar 19 instead of uh, bar 2175, which looks safer. Um, but by doing bar 19, I would gain by 2-1, for example, on 4-3, he is forced to hit me. He can't and hold you. Therefore, yeah, therefore I could you know, get a shot from the roof. Um, if I stay back on the four, with four three, he would just you know play three first and four, so I I get any you know return shots and uh, also double three, uh, he has to hit me and I, I could get a shot. Um, just interesting, of course you know um, there's some risk to be get back a uh, little bit more, but it's like really oh actually almost nothing, no downside of doing this actually. I just gain a winning chance and more. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I would basically get more shots that's interesting and that's because of the blot on the 24 if that was covered yeah that was covered then of course not i think then you would do then then there would be a different play yeah i think so oh that's a super interesting play i don't even think i i noticed this um even after looking over the match cool all right so let's go on to the next one which is Got game 12 here, move number eight. So let's just see how this game played out. Four threes, five two, three two. Uh, that's interesting as well. And we have yeah, I just, the double fives. Yeah, I mean, this move is obvious. I just wanted to show that I was really present that I'm when I saw this number five, it's such a great, great role and a great move, you know, and easy to move, you know, I was very happy, that's it. But we will see more, okay? Okay, wait, you flagged this move because you just wanted to make sure everyone knew you had a really good role in this game. <laughs> Why not? People are more interested in, you know, good roles, uh, obviously. I but mean, anyway, I remember uh, seeing this when you guys were playing. Yeah, yeah. And I just yeah. go, okay, okay, Abe's getting some game back. Abe's getting some game back. He's doing good. He's got his anchor. Then all of a sudden, boom, double fives. Game is like virtually over, right? Yeah. Then, you know, uh, he rolls a 6-1, a but then he takes the cube. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, down, down uh, yes. 33 um, pips in this race with three guys back on the four and then the guy standing outside that could just get whacked back into oblivion as well you know yeah this is just a just a pass um because i'm reading 33 pips um so he, basically he took the cube with 33 pips down um with four near four point game which is not the right decision but he's a taker as we know for sure. That and it's after, not it's it's not like yes. a, a giant blunder to take this. Um but not a lot of holding games are giant blunders to take, right? Like mm -hmm. they just end up being either small passes or, you know, takes in general, right? So Yeah, but yes, but he he takes it anyway. He he takes yeah. basically everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know, uh, you lose 100% of the games, you, you pass, right? So if we go down the line a bit, there's another double fives on move number 12. Yeah, again, I had really great double five. Uh, the last one was really nice as well. I mean, I escaped 23 and I, you know, but this one is also like quite, quite nice. And I was really happy so that I just, you know, flag it in. Then next, um, five, three and four, one, this is really interesting. Um, oh, wow. so, so over the board, I blindly made a deuce point and I didn't even think about any other move. I would have done um, the same, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I probably do the same, even if I have like, you know, more time on it. Uh, like if it happened in a seven point match or something, I still make the same play, probably without thinking. If I was presented this as a quiz, then I would think sometime and hopefully find like play. But the idea here is by playing a three, I could keep all the builders on ace point and deuce point, therefore less bad numbers. If I made just deuce points, 
then my fault would be a big, um, uh, like, really annoying number. For example, 6-4, I'm going to leave a shot. 5-4, uh, I'm going to leave a shot. Uh, even though like 3-1, uh, yeah, 3-1 is going to leave a shot and 6-1 is going to leave a shot. I think I, I, like, I have like 10 numbers that I have to leave a shot um, instead of uh, six numbers uh, by playing a three. So basically you're keeping the same structure you would have had, you, you know, and, and all of your numbers that would have made the points now could make the points in the future except you're just eliminating those bad rolls by keeping the spare checker on the six point, right? Yes. The whole point is playing safe until the end. And mm -hmm. basically, I have more bad numbers than the other. So that's clearly a blunder. But um, it's not easy to find over the board because you make a new point, you know, and so you just make it, you know, but it's, uh, it's a problem. Because it feels like you're giving yourself a new landing spot, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in reality, it does create more bad numbers because on most of your fours after that, you do have to like, well, some of the uh, leave, leave shots, yeah? Okay, interesting. And uh, that was that. By, by the way, I, I, I also, so this game, game number 12, mm -hmm. at the end, I just left a shot and I got hit, okay? And uh, I lost yeah, two you points. rolled 6-1 immediately, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and if, so and if you made the is... other play, it makes the two. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's like a four point thing. Instead of winning two points, he won two points. Okay, and next game, let, let's go. So it actually affected <clears throat> the outcome of the game. One of the bad rolls happened. You had to play the ace to the the one, and uh, mm -hmm. he hit you. Eventually. Well, not not immediately. Not but, immediately. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. But, much, but much he could later. have. Yeah. Yeah, okay, 13. Okay, so we're on move number two. We have a double four. Yeah, this is the first oversight, I, I think. I didn't see it at all. Uh, it's a gigantic blunder here. And obviously I didn't see that I could make a four point. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, winning on the guy. Yeah, and I didn't even notice over the board. So the blitzing play um, is just better here, even though you've got six checkers on the 13 point, right? Because it just feels very natural to unstack the heavy point, make the five. Right. But, but I mean, if you want to unstack, then you could play, you could possibly play 39 twice and 84 twice, yep. which is the second best, second best much play. better than my play. But I just didn't see it, of course, uh, you, you should make a uh, four point and deuce point um, because he might dance, you know, nine times. Uh, plus, it stops him making a new point. If I just play five points, then he has so many numbers to create a new points later on 21, but also five point, four point, bar point, you know, so many good numbers. So why not, not you know, stop him doing it? Yeah, because he could just roll a three and just anchor, right? And then what advantage is there, right? By putting him in the air, you stop him from anchoring and increase the volatility in your favor, yeah? Or he could just fan. Yeah, yeah, but not only the anchor, but also so many numbers he could make, his own five point, you know, own yeah. seven point, own four point, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all right, because he just has so many roles to develop. You're just stopping yeah. all of his momentum because he has to enter before he can do anything else, yeah? Yeah, this is just an overlook. Uh, I mean, and it could happen in a speed game. It shouldn't happen, but it happened, and I was kind of surprised. And I, I didn't even notice. And maybe, I don't know, it may not be noticed as well. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the speed of the game was, was such where, I mean, not seeing a play is a real possibility, you know? Mm -hmm. Just because you That's have to true. move. Yeah, but I, I shouldn't do it. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> of course. Because I have to pay, you know, 1.5% of the stake every second. But this is clearly, avoid, could, you know, could be avoided by so, taking, say, two seconds, you know. I have a question. Um, so Abe had a play, move 11 in this game. Mm -hmm. And it was a blunder. 
he was supposed to hop out with the the six and just cover the deuce oh. point, giving you the extra mm-hmm. ace here, mm-hmm. which I, I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Is this something that would be automatic to you, or no? It it's, it cannot be automatic to anybody. I don't think. No. Um, but a couple of reasons I could see is that of course you um, strengthen your home board so that uh, you might get a return shot. Uh, for example, actually, I'm not sure if I, he could get any shots. Uh, yeah, he could say like he rolled. Uh, oh, no, not really. Hmm. I feel like also maybe one of the yeah. reasons is some of the aces that point on you on on the inside might also, mm-hmm. you know, you've got two one and double ones as return shots, maybe. I don't know right. if that has that, anything to do with anything. No, no, it, it's it's something, of course. Yeah. The uh, ace is completely duplicated. So only downside with the ace is double ace and ace six, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, any other ace, he will just make a three. I will just make three points. It's that no effect. Um, yeah, but plus you make a new point, and that could you know be a potentially a big factor as well. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And then later on, we have move number 16. Oh, you flagged move number 16. You just fanned. <laughs> <laughs> no, he fanned, and then he I fanned. load the 6-1. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I load five, double 5, and I lost from, from here. So I'm just trying to point it out that uh, game number 12, I won, I lost from maybe like winning chance 90%. I also lost uh, from like 95% here, do you agree? So uh, the combined odds of this happening, you know, lose from 90% or 90 and 95% is like, you know, one in, I, I don't know, like 100 or no, 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 uh, one in 10% times 5% is oh. really low, like one in 200 or something. But it's in funny. back end, it's, yeah, easily I, happening, and nobody don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just watched this game, and I, I forgot that you did. Like he's sitting on the roof with two checkers, and we reached this spot where you rolled the four one, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's interesting. So the plays on move number fifteen. The difference between the best play and the second best play and the third best play are nominal, right? It's like 0. 0.003, 0. Mm-hmm. 0.004, right? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 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 almost nothing, and then you know you see a number like uh, six one double fives, right? And then you go, okay, well, is that really where the point zero zero four comes from? Is the moment you roll double fives, you leave a shot immediately, right? Like, is that? No, uh, no, I, no, I, I didn't regret my previous moves, but yeah. I just, you know, want to say that so this is like six point swing, uh, winning gammon, you know, often. Actually, I was a uh, favorite to win gammon here. So winning Gammon uh, to lose two points, so like six point swing. The last game was a four point swing, so it's a ten point swing in two games. And naturally, like it happened so quick, and nobody really pay attention. But uh, <laughs> back in such game, so uh, I don't know. I just found yeah. it interesting. <laughs> I will say that of I course. play with Abe yeah. often, and he wins these types of games all the time. <laughs> So I don't blink an eye when I see he's getting gammoned almost every game. We've got 95% winning chances. Of course he wins more than anybody else because he takes the cube to get his position. You You can't win a game like this unless you take a game like this. That's true. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. And, And he hits here, right? And he didn't cover the two point. And so you've got 20 numbers from the roof instead of just 11 to hit back. Yeah, so that was his mistake like 20 minutes ago, you know, when he rolled a 6-2, he had to done that. <laughs> you can you can still get gammoned even when the best sequence happened because of the misplay that happened 20 moves prior, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Super interesting. Well, all yeah. connected, you know. All right, so game 14, I'm just going through that now, seeing if there's anything here. 
oh, okay. So before we get to, so there's no flag in this game, but I did mm-hmm. want to ask you about move number three for Abe here with his six five. Um, ah, okay. I I I find plays like this interesting, you know. Um, okay. Where like not every six five. I have a folder of positions in my computer where you have mm-hmm. a bunch of six fives, and it's labeled not all six fives run to the midpoint. <laughs> and this would be one of those cases where it's actually a blunder to run uh-huh. to the mid. Yeah. Any 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 thoughts on a position like this? Yes, I can. I mean. Uh, it doesn't make sense to go to the midpoint here. First of all, he's way down in the race. And secondly, his other plays are making a heavy eight point and makes so much sense because now eight point is dripped and so many guys on the midpoint. So you want to unstack. Uh, plus the last factor is my position. Um, my position is not really ready to climb him. Um, so uh, he has no need uh, to get out here, you know, he can get out anytime he wants, basically, next couple of crawls because I'm not ready to plan him. So, um, yeah, running it doesn't make sense here. And then another 6 5 um, happened afterwards, and this one isn't quite a big error to run, but it was still the wrong game plan. They wanted to make the heavy eight, but the move before it was uh, running. I actually queued a sound effect for this mm-hmm. play that I forgot to play <laughs> during the match. So I'm going to I'm going to play it now. Hold on, where is it? Oh, here it is. You you're not going to be able to hear it, but they will on the on the stream. Why are you running? Why are you running? Okay. That'll I hear that. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> All right. So let's go to game right. 15 here. Okay. And let me just skim through the moves to get to the cube decisions that were here. Um, so Abe missed a cube here on move number seven, a repeating cube error, small though, on move number eight, and then he doubled on move number nine and got a pass. Which was an easy take, actually, big take. So what makes this position such... Uh, a big a big take whereas in the the holding game that Abe was in in the other game it was a sizable pass yes uh, the point here is uh 10 points uh 10 points really annoying point for Abe and it's not easy to clear plus he has open five point um well i mean 10 point against 21 so six pips apart it's, it's the most hardest point to clear. Plus, you know, the fact that he doesn't have five points and makes it a take. And I don't lose much gammon here because I have an anchor and he only have two point board yet. Um, so that makes like, like yeah, I mean, it's clear take. And I, I didn't know. And I made a little study about this. And those kind of positions is, tend to take uh, as a matter of fact. This is really, you know, educational uh, position here for me. So you have a you, you made a study about it. What do you mean you made a study about it? What does that mean? Well, I just checked a bunch of you know similar positions and which makes it take, which makes it pass. Uh, for example, if he has a nine point instead of ten point, what's going to happen? And if he had five point, what's going to happen? And, and stuff like that. Change if he the has the nine point, see. is it a pass? Uh, if he has a nine point, I think it's a still a take, but still a take. like very very, yeah. very small take or something. So. If he doesn't fill in the five, oh, no, actually, point, sorry, I just checked on nine point. It's a pass. Yeah, I've 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 noticed that you know obviously there's a gap there in the five, um, which could mm-hmm. is, is a deficiency. But I've noticed a lot of um, positions where the, the the opponents like home board anchor, if it's holding a point that's six away, it makes it very often yeah. a take because the six away mm-hmm. contact is super hard to clear. Because your mm-hmm. sixes just don't play well. You kind of always leave a shot and you never get to come closer in those instances where you can't clear it sooner. Um, but like five mm-hmm. away contact is just much better because when you roll those sixes, you can obviously play the other one in. It makes it much, much easier to clear. 
Um, so those 608 contact spots are, 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 are pretty big, but yeah, I, I yeah. see. Well said, Justin. And uh, I want to just uh, add something that if I don't have a check on the 24 and move to 21, that's going to be a pass. Mm. And if we, if we move uh, eight point to five points, so that five point is filled up, then it's a pass. If we move, if we move uh, three checkers on 10 point to nine point, it's also a pass. So every slight every, movement, uh, every slight modification is going to be a pass. In this so position. every position except this position, it's a pass pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, but it all makes sense. Of course, this is such a subtle position. Everything going towards a pass. If the I mean, checker on the 11 point was on the 8 point, is it a pass? <sighs> really? Did you check it? No, I didn't check it because I'm, I'm doing the stream mm -hmm. side of it, but you have it open. I'm just uh -huh. asking because it creates uh -huh. more flexibility. Um, it's a, it's a take, can, actually. It, yeah, because you it, can use the take. builder there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, uh, I always maybe, look to maybe variations so. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, maybe that's the way you... Or, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Uh, maybe if you move uh, 11 to 8, then some other bad numbers, such as like 6, 1 maybe, six, or I don't know, 6, 5, it's not as effective, or 6, 2 is like a disaster, and stuff like that. So uh, Yeah, I, I was wondering if there was like some sort of parlay where like, uh, you know, maybe you roll the 5, 1 to make the 5, but you're still leaving the, you know, the 5, 2 for another roll. All of these little things sometimes add up, mm -hmm. and now you know it gives you some other numbers, but then it also takes away some numbers, right? Like your sixes don't play as well now that there isn't a checker on the eleven point. So the eleven point guy might be an asset now because you get to play six five better, you get to play six one, six two better. Right? Yeah. So as a result, it's cancelled out, and it's yeah, exactly. take almost the same amount by the same amount. All right, I'm going to skip ahead to the game sixteen. See if there's any flags in this one. Oh, there are. Uh, quite yeah, a few. this okay. game is the one I regret the most, and I constantly, you know, doubt myself. What did I do wrong? And uh, I, I was pretty sure that I made some blunders along the way, but of course, over the board, I didn't, you know, uh, couldn't recall which was a blunder. But anyway, I didn't like the game, the way I played in this game, and uh, the fact that I lost eight points in this game. So here we go. So <clears throat> the five one. Yeah, this 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 is the one that I regret uh, first of all. So in a in a slower game where you you have the pip count easily available to you, do you I, find I this have play a pip in most count scenarios? In this oh, you do. I, I had a pip count. Uh, yes, I did have. I, I did a landing count, and at this point. I'm not sure how precise I was, but I was pretty sure that I was up and up enough to make the play available. And I also knew this play. I, I saw it before. Um, you know, I, this is my, my blunder folder. So I, I knew the idea of the play behind it, but I just didn't have a guts to do it. You know what I mean? I mean, it looks scary. <laughs> so, yes, but so you... Think about it. I mean, so you are way up in the race, but your timing is gone. It's so bad. you have to do action now because he's going to expand his board, you know? So you, you want to escape now before he makes better board. It's um, not going to get so any by, better for you next No, round. no. And you might not no. be lucky enough to it, even roll a number to hop it in the next right. roll or two. And right. then your position right. just right. starts to get crunched and you start losing outfield control. Yeah, getting worse and worse if you just wait. Um, and by coming out, of course, I give him so many, you know, pointing on, for example, like 5-3 or something, you know, 5-2 and stuff like that. But then I have some return shots. Um, but all in all, it's much better than just sitting and wait to see what happens. What happened is just bad things going to happen. <laughs> if I come out, of course, bad things going to happen, but good things may happen too. Yeah, I mean... Uh sometimes waiting for a better number, you end up waiting forever and then you miss your train, you know? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the the game plan of waiting for double sixes um, just doesn't doesn't happen a, as often as you'd like. Um, that's, that's a really, <laughs> really, really interesting play here. 
Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I do know. I, I, I don't think I could have pulled the trigger on it. Um, but after seeing it, I hope, you know, that's the hope that, that you'll be able to pull the trigger next time, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, well, if you see the play and think about it a little bit, then it all, all makes sense now. Yeah. You know, the question is always of timing. Like backgammon often is a game of timing. And a lot of people, once, you know, when you first are, start playing, you don't have a good feel for timing. You think mm -hmm. things are going to go differently. You're going to run with a better number next time where you're not leaving the two shots. Maybe you roll 6 3, 6 4, 6 5, but then maybe you don't, you know? And then your position just crunches and things just get worse. Where, you know, backgammon is a game of taking chances. You can't play the game without taking some risk. And yeah, um, very good point. Timing is the most uh, difficult factor in game, and uh, it's a difficult factor to explain as well. When you get a feel for it, uh, the you end up lowering your PR by 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 quite a bit. But a lot of people have a pessimistic sort of view. Uh, you know, they only think that things can go wrong. They they forget that things could also go right. You know, and mm -hmm. they might they might not. Uh, be able to do something successful or they do point on you and you do hit back one of the outside checkers and things could go really right for you as well you know um yeah just imagine yourself in the shred that uh, um your captain you have to explain all other crew members that you have to come out and many of them are gonna shout to you that are you crazy are you gonna you know you are leaving like 16 pointing on numbers and you know blah 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 and this is just too hard but yeah. you have to do it out here you know it happened to me the other day i had a position in, in the chouette that, that, that you came to and um i had a play where to everybody else besides me it looked obvious to hit obvious to him. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I know I'm not showing you the position now. Maybe I'll, I'll show it to you later. It's really interesting. And I was just like, I, I can't hit this. I can't hit it. You know? And then what happened is everyone starts screaming at me. Right. <laughs> uh, Justin, you're an idiot. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? You gotta like, right. And, uh, I'm, I'm like, they're like, it's, the, it's a, it's going to be the biggest blunder you've ever made. Right. But it's, but it's like the best play to not hit by a mile. And then I take the position home and I look at numbers that hit that are even better than the number that I was given and it's still wrong to hit. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's tough, especially in a chouette. I don't know if most people know what chouettes are, but, um, I do have a video of you playing in a chouette with Abe and Nevzat after this match that should probably go up online too at some point. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. All but right. any, anyhow, the, yeah. uh, over the board, I didn't have the guts to, uh, do the, do the best, do the best play. Because I was like, as a crew members, you know, I was scared, you know, uh, why do I need to, you know, leave 16 numbers or 20 numbers? I can wait. Maybe I lost something good. Uh, what is something good is I don't know. But I just <laughs> no. Then you, then you, then you make the safer in, in air quotes, the safer play. And then the guy rolls yeah. the five, four and hits you anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, or six, three. Yeah. Whereas five, four, the other way. Maybe he makes the three point. Maybe he cleans up his position, and mm -hmm. if he makes the three point, the five four hits. I mean, yeah, your next yeah, next roll yeah. hits five two. You know. Yeah, we can go on and on and on. Yeah, exactly. It's, just, uh, it's, it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh, the four three. Ah, the four three move number thirteen. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see this play as well. Yeah. This one is actually uh, could be, you know, seeable. Um, you know, I could find it if I have more time, I guess. But also not so easy to find it because after the best play 6362, um, if you visualize it, um, I only have a three to cover and six to cover, but six is completely duped. I really need to come out with the sixes. Um, with my play, though I leave 20 numbers, um, but uh, I have ace and deuce and five to cover, so which looks much better. So I'm not really sure that if I could find the best play um, or, or with more time, but um, it's just an interesting play. Yeah. 
I, I guess all the extra hitting numbers just end up being too much and having, you know, the increased likelihood of the four guys behind that prime means the game is just, it's just, uh, it's going to be too, too tough at that point to win and it would just be over. Um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. tough. I saw the duplication of the six as well. And I go, well, the sixes need to leave too. And you know, like, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to cover or you're going to run out. And I, I bet you the answer is probably to run out and not even to cover if you roll a six, you know? Right. Because the timing is so poor, like you're, you're not guaranteed to roll one in the future. So I, I... and a lot of your sixes, you know, six, one hits twice, six, four puts a second guy up, six, two covers, right? Six, five. What is six five? No, six five is okay. Yeah, that's uh an interesting spot, these these switching of the points plays, you know. I guess in a blitzing position, every point is kind of worth the same if you can get away with it, right? And all you really want to do is keep the guy dancing. And you were doubled here. That's the next flag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um this one um, happened to be like huge take and I made the right decision, uh, but over the board and I was not sure because I was just killed after, you know, after the taking. So in my mind, I was, you know, such a doubt in my mind that maybe it was like a big, big pass and which I took. Um, so this is like a great psychological factor in backhand and you have to be confident with the decision and you shouldn't regret what you have done because it's nothing to do with a, a you know, future decision. You have to just forget it, you know? Yeah, I mean, he fanned on the next roll too, so that must be feeling good, right? No, you fanned. No, yeah, no, he fanned on the next roll. And then mm -hmm. uh, the roll was followed up by 6-3. And mm -hmm. that's uh, that's an interesting play as well, right? Uh, just stopping yeah, and lifting yeah. eight to five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I should, uh, you know, decrease the number of blocks here. Uh, no reason to stay on the eight point. But six is duped as we uh, described already. And so it, it keeps the connection between the front checkers and the back checkers. And if he fans again, there might be a second and a third guy on the roof, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. That's a tough play. All right, let's go on to the next flag, which is, oh, later on, there's a cube decision. As the game goes on and on, we get to move number 27. Yeah. And, oh, you, you, you read... You redoubled this as as blue. Yeah, I, I, redoubled, I redoubled this, yeah. All right. And this happened to be an, not a redouble here. Yeah. All right, so so what, what, are, what are your thoughts on this position? Well, this is kind of interesting because I, I saw the similar position quite recently. So I had almost like a reference position. It's very similar. So I decided to double. But uh, the difference between my position and this position is that my guy uh, is, so I have two checkers on the four point, yes? Yes. But my position that I recall was like uh, two checkers on the eight point. Okay. You know what I mean? But uh, with, the, with so the open three point still. With, yes, with open three point, but I have a spare, not a spare. I don't have any spare on the four point. Instead, I have eight point. So I have eight more pips, you know, eight more timings, better right? Timing, yeah. Yeah, better timing. That makes like big double and big take. But as 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 it is, um, without the uh, eight point, this is just uh, you know quite early to double. I have to wait until I either hit four or step up with the deuce, and I might lose the market. But so let it be, you know. Uh, again, it's those, uh, any small changes to the position uh, make a big impact on my equity. Um, that's it. So if he had the open two point instead of the three point, this would probably be a cube? Uh, with the same position, same spares? Yeah, everything else. Uh-huh. Could be. 
Oh, I just checked it, and it's very small, small, no double. Now it's like a borderline. Yeah, I, 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 I would have had a very, I, I don't think I could have ever cubed this, but I think that's just due to me not knowing that any position with an open three point could be a cube. You know, I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. have like if I had the eight point made in this position, I still think I would not have doubled, and that would have been a blunder on my end, but from the other side. Yeah, that's a tough position. Yeah. Looking at it still, just kind of staring at it, um, visualizing the eight point being made and, and that making uh, uh, such a difference. So I'm going to have to play that one out quite a few times myself. So my, my regret here is, the true regret here is, is this. So over the board, I felt my in- intuition told me that this is not a double. Um, not only it's technically no double, which is probably my, you know, intuition told me, but also he's going to be, a, he's going to take. <laughs> Without know? a doubt. I have to know. Yeah, I have to, I have to know this guy at this point, but um, I, I don't Without just something, you know, caught up to me and uh, bring to the cube action here. And which is a big, big, I mean, not a big blunder, but Plastico so is a big blunder against him. Yeah, you you've played enough with us now to know right. that like um yeah that I, there I, are some things yeah. that are really borderline cubes mm-hmm. um that I, I I won't double in this chouette um that that we play in. Um, just because I know that it's going to be very difficult for me to lose my market on the next roll. I'm going to have to roll something uh, r- remarkable, you know, because uh, I feel like even if you roll a four, right, and then he mm-hmm. rolls a three and you give him a cube, mm-hmm. it- it's likely you still get a take, right? So, Right, yeah. It's technically a take too, I think. Okay, yeah. But of course, I mean, I have many market losers too. If I just roll a deuce and he dance, then it's going to be a market loser. If yeah, I roll like double sure. ace, you know, you know, so uh, it's not stupid cute. Well, but every just, deuce I followed should... by a fan, I guess, right? Because mm-hmm. 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 every deuce that, and then he enters, still pretty big take. Uh, but I mean, so, technically and practically, I didn't make the right decision. I should have followed my intuition, not, you know, comparing with stupid reference uh, <laughs> position. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of our intuition comes from learning like reference positions and, and you know, how you can adjust. Is this better or is this worse in your head? Like, how big was the cube before? Is this better or is this worse than the reference I have in my head? You know, is how like I do a lot of like adjustments over the board. Um, so, I mean, the intuition is gained through that and, you know, your adjustment next time will be even better in a similar spot, you know, because now you'll have that position and this position to gauge from. And then as you get more positions, right, your, your accuracy improves. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So there was a four cube took six, five, and of course the next roll immediate Three, four from the roof. <laughs> yeah, immediate uh, punishment. Immediate punishment. The three, yeah. four to enter and hit. And this is yeah. the ape snake. And that is how the ape snaketh. And uh, yeah. And then, then I had like a wrong torture. You and know, then like, it's too good, <laughs> you know? And then it's too good. Yeah. And he just plays like for on. For next uh, 20 moves, I had to regret that what I was doing. You know. <laughs> what am I uh, doing with my life? How did I get here? Yeah, you know, I, I, I doubled to save, save the gamut. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> After my double, you know, the next job is save the gamut. <laughs> oh, man. And then, of course, I, I, there I was lost no eight points save, anyway. Yeah. And that's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's a big swing. That's a big swing. Yeah. Really big swing. No, yeah. I, I, I mean, I made a lot of big blunders on this uh, one game. You know, I made a big blunder with 4 3. I had to, you know, break six points and switch. Um, well, I shouldn't double. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ma- many things. And so I don't, I don't blame it. I mean, that's my mistake, all, all of it. Wow. That was, a, that was a wild game. So we have game 17. I'm just clicking through, okay. getting down to the double in move number five. 
Mm-hmm. And oh, again, wow. he took the kid like this. Okay. Yeah. So noticing some 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 chinks in uh, the armor, you know, of the of the Abe snake here. Um, wow. So what makes I mean, okay, he's he's so I I, I have seen positions that you've posted. I think you've done a lecture on holding game cubes before, am I right? And you've looked at the nine point versus the seven point, how many pips you can be up or down before you cube, before you can take. Oh, that, that the seminar I gave was about three point anchor, not this position. Ah, uh, yeah, but yeah, this okay. caught my interest, and I studied a little bit about this. Uh, obviously, this is just a huge pass. I mean, I'm up 45 pips, uh, but uh, so I try to find how he can take the cube. So I modified the position a little bit, and I found out. So if he's about three, move to 24, mm-hmm. and if he had eight points instead of the 11 points, so that makes him like a little bit uh, better structure, um, then it's like a borderline take. Can you visualize it? In, yeah, do you understand course. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, the back man on a 24 and eight point instead of 11 uh, makes it like small, small pass, like borderline. Um, but as it is, uh, his back one is on a 23 and he doesn't even have an eight point and makes it like huge pass. And also like small minor changes, such as if I had a uh, three point instead of four point, so I have a gap on the four, um, it's uh, still, a, still a pass, but it's probably like a hundred pass instead of like 300 pass, you know? Yeah, I mean, being on the 23 is not as good as defense as being on the 24, for sure. I mean, you don't get a shot on 6-5 for one, you know. Um, and these are some of the numbers that that defender is waiting for. And I guess being on, what, the 8 point instead of the 11 point, I mean, it helps with his race, but it also is part of the structure of the prime. Yeah. But 45 pips is 45 pips at the end of the day. And that, is hard, <laughs> and that is hard to overcome, yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, that, this is a good position because I could run uh, a lot of from him. I uh, studied a little bit about this, and uh, yeah, very nice. So, what, what did you say there again? You, you could do what? Uh, I, this is very good because I studied a bit about this position. I okay. changed, uh, you know, different anchors, different uh, backman, different points I have, four points, three points, two points, and all different answers, of course. And then I could develop my uh, instinct or sense of the position. So is this an easier or worse take if you're on the three point instead of the, the tw- I mean, if you're on the 22 point instead of the 20 point? Oh, that is interesting. Because now you have a gap to, to overcome, right? And then the defender could uh-huh. be back on the 24 as well. Uh, I, I would say so. Yeah, I just checked it. And this is like 52 pass. So much, okay. yeah, 76 passes instead of 296. So yeah, it's much better for yellow because race is basically dead anyway. Dead. And so he, you want to wait back, not 20 points. Yeah. It's more contact. As Mark Olson would say in his book, it increases the contact value of the position for white, yeah? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. And so by being further back uh, in your position, it makes it harder for the other guy to go home and increases the contact, whereas having the 20 is great if the race is close. Um, but if you're, if you're just buried like this in the race, the 20-point anchor doesn't provide much contact value, especially when the, the, the bar point is made, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's run through this. That one's done. 17, game 18. Any flags in this one? He had, oh, you rolled double you rolled double fives here. That's a bad number. Um, so I notice a note here, but I don't notice a flag mm-hmm. on move number 10 in game 18. Yeah, so... Uh- Six two. I should have played seven one seven five, and I wonder what uh, wonder why. And I found it, but <laughs> it's so 
I mean, difficult to explain, but if I try to explain, then um, if I break eight points, then I give him um, not only good six, I mean, six is a good anyway, because he could come out, but also four, two, um, he could run uh, to the 15. Uh, well, if I break the seven point, he only have double three to run. So it's a one number difference. Yeah. Um, uh, plus a uh, four, uh, four, one and three, one is a big difference. A three, one, um, I'm trying to say that if I break eight point and he rolls three, one, then he could just keep his ball. You know, he could play four, one, three, two. So he still keeps four point board. Mm -hmm. But if I play correctly seven five, seven one, and then he rolls three, sorry, four one, then he has to break a four point board. Mm. Or he you has know, to come he has to break six range of you. Yes, yes, yes. So those uh, two numbers are like big swing numbers, uh four two and between four one and three one. Do you think it would be better to just come into direct range of you or break your board? Uh, I think you have to break the board. I, I don't know. I didn't check about it, but in either way. Oh, four. Um, oh, yeah, four, two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Well, four, two. Yeah. But four, two, you would break the yeah, six. Yeah, you can see the big difference in yeah, four, you would two break immediately. The six, definitely, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just make the four point. Yeah, four point mm -hmm. under four. Okay, cool. And... But this is abnormal. This is not normal because you are actually killing the checker on the ace point and it was right by like five percent yeah it looks really funny mm. it looks really funny I, like if, if backgammon was ever a beauty contest that play doesn't win the beauty the beauty pageant for sure no way yeah. to find the right play you have to you know count the numbers and see the difference and then make the right decision it's very hard so i i don't think i could you know find the right play anyway yeah. but it's just interesting to if, study. If, if I had your 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 logic muscle to actually go through like every roll, like you can't do that here, right? The speed is just too much to go through no, every roll, no, right? No. Especially in a play that just not. looks trivial, right? But then when you go through yeah. it, you know, if you had unlimited time, if even if I saw the swing numbers, I could still convince myself to still go with this play because it just looks better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is better. It, yeah, it is better. Sure. We, if you don't load those numbers, of course, having a point on the deuce is better because you, it's not dead yet. Yeah. Um, but then he rolls. Uh, then you roll the. Then Abe rolls the four four. Yeah. Um, immediately, yeah. right? And but then, but then the <laughs> six one cometh. You know. Uh huh. I go, oh, four, four. Oh my God, the game is over. Then five, seven comes. Oh my gosh, you know? But um, all right, that was game 18, game 19. Quick game, nothing there. Game 20, which is the final oh, game. Oh, no, this no, episode. no. G game 19 is maybe one of the only, only cubes that he dropped. <laughs> ah, okay. I, I, I skipped it because there was a flag. There was no flag. So this is the only pass in the no, no, entire no, session skip. that Abe No, 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 I'm not, saying that. I'm not saying that, but this is yeah, one of the layer positions that he actually dropped the correct take. This know? is a tough take. Yeah. Very tough take. Even for the ape snake, this is a tough take. He's just stuck on the 24, you just make it, but I, he still has to leave too, I guess, but... I could see myself uh, passing that one too. New mm. game, I say. New game. Four, <laughs> three, four, one. Mm. Yeah, the slot is generally right in these sorts of spots when you enter and you have the ace to play. Especially when the guy has stuff to do with his other checkers. Then we have the double five. Ah, okay. So this is one of the, the, the plays that you flagged for Abe. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell us about it. Here's the initial well, position. I, He's on the roof. Mm, I, I don't know. I feel like he never makes ace point or but he never tries to even hit an ace point. Um, I have seen him. So to, yeah. I, I have seen him in positions 
where it'll be like a 6-2 split followed by 6-5. Mm-hmm. And he'll hit with the six, but won't commit and play the five to the one point. He'll just play two down. Uh huh. Nice, like uh, very classical, like pure play. Very pure. That's that's definitely his style. Everything has to be in a row. Ducks in a row. Solid structure all the time. Even if he knows it's right to hit on the ace point, won't he do won't it. do it. Won't do it. Mm-hmm. Won't do it. Very so, interesting. So what makes it um, that much better to just follow up with the attack on the ace point here? Uh, well, I mean, he has already 10 checkers in the zone, meaning that he has so many ammunition uh, to go for a blitz. Uh, you know what I mean? So naturally, you mm-hmm. can put two on the bar and uh, you know go for the attack. Also, if he does what he did, then... I have so many return shots, you know, uh, not from, you know, not by hitting the outfield, but I can also hit uh, my bar point with any ace or six, and I can also hit ace point with any five. Um, so it's just too much, you know, he's leaving too many shots and he, you know, didn't take the chance to go for the blitz. I, yeah, I mean, 10 checkers in the zone, definitely leans more towards uh, a, a blitzing style of a, of a play. And also, you know, hopping out to the 18 makes one of your opponent's worst numbers uh, a good number, right? His sixes, giving your opponent good sixes from the roof is often not, uh, not advisable. Exactly. Uh, look, he has a nice builder on a nine point and 10 point. So he want he like to use it by using it. Um, he doesn't want me to stop him to do it. So if he doesn't hit me, then I would distract him by hitting Lewis on the eight point or you know bar point. So his builder on nine and nice builders on nine and ten doesn't be a builder. Wow, it's a good one. And that is game twenty. Is that is that all the games from this session up to game twenty? Yes. Yeah, I I, I think so. Yeah. And after this game, the score is dead even. So, yeah. (laughs) So, easy come, easy go. The dice giveth and the dice taketh away. Um, Wow, yeah, that was a crazy swing in episode one, crazy swings in episode two. Episode three should be. Yeah, but I don't don't complain it. I, I made a silly mistakes on the game number 16. So it I was gave a up really eight big points, cube almost. and a really big swing. And uh, one thing mm-hmm. about Abe is that there is no cube from anybody on earth that is going to pressure him. Doesn't matter who it is, right? If he thinks it's a take, it's a take. And if he thinks it's a small pass, it's probably a take anyway, you know? So um, <laughs> it's uh, it doesn't matter who it's coming from, which... I really actually admire about the guy that he doesn't let anyone get into his head. He plays his game consistently um, all the time for, um, you know, multiple times a week. He's been playing backgammon, you know, longer than anyone I know. Um, mm-hmm. It was Yeah, the that first makes game. him like constant winner in the high stakes chouette in New York, I guess, you know. Definitely. Definitely one of the biggest winners uh the high stakes chouettes in New York City. It was the first game he ever learned. Most people know him from um high stakes poker online on what used to be on TV in America, right? Um mm-hmm. but his first game he ever learned was backgammon. And he goes, I, I went to the park one day, was playing backgammon with these guys. I had just learned the rules that day, and I was already better than, than all the guys there <laughs> <laughs> on day really? one. Yeah, but this was back in the day. You know, this was like okay. way back before computers, back before this, back before, you know, even back before most books were written about the game, you know? The guy never had XG, never had Snowy, never had Jellyfish, never had any books. Everything he learned about backgammon was from just, I guess, just talking with other players and just ideas that he came up with himself, you know? And to this day, he still doesn't have XG. Oh, really? He doesn't even have XG now? Wow. That's amazing. 
That's yeah. really amazing. If he wants to look at a position, he'll call me on the phone and ask me to put it in. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But all right. So um, we're going to sign off now. Uh, thank you, uh, Mochi, for doing this. This video will be up on your channel um, momentarily. We're going to do a premiere, mm -hmm. have it all set up. And I look forward to doing this again with episode three. May the crazy games continue.